Yeah, it is Nick and Jack from the studio here. But before we get into this one, we had just like a couple things we want to let you know about. This episode, it is delightful. It is hilarious. It is unfiltered. And as always, we rated it PG because when we jump in T-Boy style, this is a family-friendly show, Jack. In this episode, we'll talk corporate do's and don'ts. We'll talk the difference between work and FERC. Yes. And we'll answer your questions about your sticky career situations. Oh, and Yetis, this is definitely one to watch, yes. not just listen to. So like invite over your bestie, grab a non-alcoholic double-digit latte or a Cabernet and get T-Boy YouTube on the old Roku. You want to see us on the big screen right yeah, now. You now, do, you do. if you're listening in the car, that's great. Watch us later by clicking the link in the episode description to our YouTube channel. Because the dynamic of four people on the couch for this episode, I mean, this was insane, Jack. We almost ran out of microphones for this episode. I was holding on to my seat, literally, because Ross was wearing such an epic suit. Was that crimson or was it burgundy? We need the link from him so that we can put it in the newsletter, by the way. Also, Natalie and I both had styes in our eyes, which is like a <laughs> medical thing we should disclose up front. Uh, you'll hear more about that on the show. No, but seriously, I was holding on to my chair. I was laughing that hard. I thought I was going to fall off. So besties, make sure to check out Ross and Natalie on their podcast, Demoted, and on social media. We link their channels in the episode description. By the way, we refer to Ross as Corp. His handle is Corporate Bro. And Natalie is Corporate Natalie. They both have huge epic followings. And when you're done, let us know in the comments who you want our next business bestie to be. Jack and I will get them on our next special episode. In the meantime, Jack, should we jump into this thing? Let's get into it. Let's hit it. For <laughs> breakfast this morning, Nick had, he ordered a half calf and he only drank half of it. Yeah. Nick's a quarter, quarter, quarter calf, calf guy. guy. Let me tell you, you ask for a quarter calf, they stare at you. <laughs> So yeah, I gotta make should. my own quarter, quarter calf, calf guy. Like half a half calf. Sigma. Yeah, the continuity is gonna see that little ice <laughs> and coffee. Again, the blue bottle people said you can leave now. And again, yeah. I drink what Nick doesn't. That's that's why I am who I am. Yeah, that's true. Jack Jack will order a coffee and then he'll finish my half calf. That's good. It works that's well. cute. Need all we can get here on yeah. the, the T Boy podcast. Hey, you reached Nick and Jack at the T Boy hotline. We couldn't get to the phone right now, but you know what to do. Leave a message after the beat. Leave a message, ask us any question, and we will answer your question live on the T Boy hotline podcast. We'll get back to you. You know what to do. Yetis, our guests today are the king and queen of corporate. They're the pros of performance reviews. Together, they have over 3 million followers on Instagram and TikTok because they're saying out loud, what we're all thinking in our heads. One of them starred in a Duncan commercial. The other was an extra in a Salesforce commercial. Although he also got his MBA from Stanford. True. We should, we should point that out. We should point that out. If you want to know the best way to give feedback, they've perfected Feed Forward. And if you want to know the ideal time to quit, they'll tell you the exact time. Office bathroom etiquette? Check. How to sell you this pen? Check. Because their full-time job is creating content to improve your full-time job. Or as they call it, corporate shenanigans with a side of career advice. So for this T-Boy Hotline episode on work, we are thrilled to have our guests, Corporate Natalie and Corp, the hosts of the Demoted Podcast. This is Nick. This is Jack. And this is the best hotline yet. Live from the couch, this is T-Boy Hotline. Woo! Let's hit it. I'm screaming into the mic. Are we good? I am pouring oh, sweat. You're doing, <laughs> sweat. You're doing really I well. Want, I want to just say, Ross and I, as you guys were doing that intro, back and forth, finishing each other's sentences, yeah. we were sitting here mouth agape, just like in awe. Oh, I'm inspired. This is, awesome. this is what we do. We love whipping that up. Aspiration. When I was I mean, a kid, no idea I was going to become podcast host. Yeah. There was no such thing as podcast host. I remember spending hours in like fifth grade writing essays, trying to like <laughs> come up with an intro for an essay, and then it became so fun. And now we get to do this every single day. Fifteen hundred episodes deep. Yeah, well, we I tell people we're podcast hosts, but it 70. feels like telling people you're a DJ. Because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, my wife well, says now we're in entertainment. Oh, she yeah. does. Yeah. You are That's good. You yeah. are. My wife is a little ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> but Honestly, thank you for that intro. That was amazing. We love oh, doing it. Corporate right. king yeah. and well, queen. We'll take it. We have loved following your guys' journey because it has been an insane journey from working at a job in corporate to side hustling a creator job to full time creators mm -hmm. to this immense success to now this hugely successful podcast demoted. Like Jack and I have just loved following what you guys are doing. On your socials, I'm laughing 80% of the time, learning 20% of the time. Yeah. And then on your podcast, it's the inverse. I'm learning 80% of the time, laughing 20% yeah. of the time. Really nice combinations. I think they both are great products. Incredibly mm -hmm. generous overstatement, but we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll <laughs> Thank you so it. much. Yeah. <laughs> Ross, how did you and Natalie meet? Uh, just like every good relationship, a DM. Mm -hmm. A DM. Yeah. That's where it all starts. A DM. 
Give yeah. us the deets. She, uh, Natalie was doing her thing on TikTok, which I was being too boomer about. And you DM me one day. I, I don't remember exactly what you said, but. I think you said like, you single, you up? No. <laughs> I, I think it was a you up. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But you've been doing corporate bro for way longer. So you had like, we joke that I stole your name and likeness by doing corporate Natalie. I mean. But then I realized we were both in San Francisco. I was like, we have to yeah. collab. Yeah. We got to do it. And then we did. And we did this business jargon romance thing that kind of popped off honestly mm. and natalie love the first to, video it was yeah it was and um natalie taught me that you don't have to care as much about every little word in line so then you guys were collabing and doing a post a week or whatever when did you decide to launch a podcast that couple was recently a couple yeah. of years we've been talking about it and yeah. it's i mean i can't yeah. believe we're walking in here how you do daily shows like Wild to get things. us to record 1500 episodes that yeah. that That's is insane. crazy to get us yeah. together for one hour a week is uh. a herculean <laughs> task like we can't do it yeah, it really is what it's if a you're full-time sick? job it's full time what job. if you're sick well, like, how many hours a day do you work well speaking of sick i heard we're both in recovery do you have a style? i was going to ask you but i was like maybe it's <laughs> no, a birthmark <laughs> like, maybe do. he was born with that no 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 and if you guys want to zoom in I did. Yeah, I, the imperfections. We've been doing free. the whole podcast from the right <laughs> side. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. you I didn't know they had iced caffeinated yeah. beverages here, Nick. I didn't know either. You're I'm not a coffee guy. Either. That's why. Do you I'm see sorry. my style? I covered I mine with makeup. Like, I was gonna, and then the doctor was like, "It'll get worse." And we we like, could cut, and I could give you some concealer. I know mine's it so takes it's weeks. It's growing. Is there something in the water that we both got styes? I can't speak on it. It's a big pillar of my content, actually. My, my followers love my sty content. I, know. I, I keep I walking in. about your sty content. I'm like, oh my God, corporate yeah. Natalie. She has a sty too. No, We're both no, in I'm recovery. Like, no, We're totally. healing. You got to talk about it online. People yeah. love it. They'll never understand what we went through. I'm actually- I walked into like six it. walls. So guys, we're going to kick it off with kind of a fun mm. do's and don'ts uh, yeah. conversation. Okay. Where Great. kind of corporate do's and don'ts yeah. right up your alley. Mm -hmm. Emails. A funny out of office email. <laughs> For instance, I'll respond to your email when I've defrosted because I was north of the wall at Mount Tremblant. Of, of course. course. Of course. It does. Ross had a really great out of office when he went to Lisbon. Do you want to share that? It was all written in the verbiage of a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was something like, Ahoy, matey. A corp be out sailing the seven seas for charging me battery. <laughs> I respond upon me return. <laughs> and I hated myself for that. <laughs> so, are, you a, are you a do or don't at this point? Given that experience. Do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> sort of situation. Some pirates were offended. I think it's funny. I think I think it can be done well. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny. It's funny. I'll be chilling poolside with a pina colada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Expect a delay in my response. Yeah. Like, I like that. I think it's clever. Or how about the European way, which is like, your email has been deleted. Yeah. yeah. I am out until September. <laughs> yeah, the Europeans are off for the whole summer. <laughs> yeah. So totally. Big siesta. Absolutely. Absolutely. I won't get yeah. back to you. Contact my assistant when I return to office. That's on you to find or out. Or you when. do the office inside joke where you say, in my absence, please contact. And then you name like a colleague who yep. hates getting contacted. That's funny. <laughs> and That's then niche. like everyone in the office is like, oh, this, that was good. But like no one is going <laughs> to get Everyone externally yeah. Yeah. pissed. Yeah. The internal joke works too. Well, people are always like, if it's urgent, which it probably isn't, yeah. like, please refrain from sending me anything. You know, there's like yeah. certain attitudes that can be attributed yes. to it. And I, I, a tasteful, funny one is, yeah. I appreciate it. Great. Pirates the way to do it. All right. Next up, we got meeting times, 8 a.m. Oh. Too early for a meeting. Oh. oh. Also, too soon on the <laughs> I question. feel good. Too soon on the question. I thought you guys said it was a feel good <laughs> pod. Um, <laughs> just bring back the darkest hour of our life. I'm really stalling <laughs> for time. Starting with Edge. Now, why are we making you so uncomfortable right now? Context for yes. the, the Yetis, is it? Yes. Yep. Sprinkled on for the Yetis. The besties Natalie. and the Yetis. We have two nicknames for Have you ever like had 40 million people hate you? Have you ever <laughs> woken up one day and realized you said something that 40 million people didn't like? Not yet. Um, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. <laughs> it took us two episodes <laughs> to do that. You guys have done 1,500. <laughs> yes. And no one's been pissed. On your second episode, you said something that made 40 million people hate you? Yes. Yep. What did you say? It wasn't on our bingo card, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Matt, would you like to take this one? We, there was, it, there's a lot of context needed. Long story short, we said, there was a new hire who said, I can't make the quarterly 8 a.m. meeting. Okay. I have a workout class. It Should this be allowed? Someone wrote into our podcast and we were like, honestly, no. You got to go to the quarterly meeting. Go to the meeting. 8 a.m. You got to be. We might have laughed. Yeah. We might have laughed really hard in the face of the question. Yeah. We did laugh. Yeah, this, this poor, innocent soul who works on your team is, you know, having to give up the mental health and physical experience yeah. of a yes. workout in the morning because you demand they be there at 8 a.m. prior to typical office hours. Yes. And and we didn't demand anything, right? The, the <laughs> this context was a submission is, to this us. This is a submission that we're commenting on. And that was our opinion. And I think to this day, we stand by that opinion. 
opinion. I don't know. That's yes. I'll say that. So eight a.m. is an okay meeting time. You're saying? No, I think they said seven a.m. Right? Seven a.m. No, eight a.m. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, in sales, you take any meeting you can get. Okay. <laughs> if someone wants to meet with me, I will meet them anywhere, anytime. So wow. the context does matter. This was also like an international meeting where it was like meeting with the, the team in India and it was like yeah. one of the few times uh, at work. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things, details were stripped away when the face value question was asked. Yeah, right. and you do right. social clips for the podcast. It was yeah. a social clip that ended up being our demise. The media took your response out of context. Yes, they did. yes. Yeah. They anyone did. Who's, anyone who's working <laughs> they really did. Uh, <laughs> any publicity is good publicity though. Yeah. I mean- Attention from 40 million people. That's pretty fantastic. That's big. The and been, meeting was worth it. There have been Wall Street Journal articles. Like, what? what's the wow. ideal BuzzFeed meeting time? Up, you know, the pinnacle of publications. Yeah, BuzzFeed. Wow. No, but there. But now there's a big discussion of like, what is what the is? ideal meeting time? Yeah. And is 8 a.m. meeting okay? I mean, started I, the conversation. I That's think true. the ideal meeting true. time, by the way, is 11 a.m. Because everyone that. wants lunch, so that is an automatic hard stop without having to say it at noon. <laughs> I would agree with you. For the purpose of our PR team who's sitting right there, we're going to have to say no to 8 a.m. meetings. <laughs> <laughs> if it's outside your scheduled work time, you should not have to work during that time uh, unless absolutely. you're being compensated. Right. Can you put a text overlay on the screen, too? Got we have it. a couple of disclaimers yeah. that are the, <laughs> the office, legal team. The <laughs> Office of Corporate Natalie says hard yeah. now. <laughs> By the way, the time zone thing's a good point. Because like for anyone who's worked with like website developers in New Zealand, you know, like they're, they're in next week right now, like whatever time zone that is totally yeah so yeah it's tough well and okay. just you gotta respect okay. people's time times. zone ballet is tough to pull off that's what we're saying the respect record's been times. corrected what's next Nick? next As we always have and do next <laughs> question is the compliment sandwich i love it promoted promoted really? <laughs> yeah because i see right through it yeah i think gen like z doesn't like it ago, I people are like oh i just got two compliments <laughs> i can handle that thing in the middle <laughs> totally. a little pointer that little feed forward <laughs> but now you know if someone yeah. opens with you know something's coming. Yeah, down. Jack, your I'm hair seeing, looks just, amazing I'm today. Ignoring your compliment and the thinking shirt. about what you're about to say to me next. But I love. I think the that's pants. fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <funny. laughs> I'm really surprised you two are for the compliment sandwich. Yeah. I mean, well, we can you give us a uh, example? It's all about how would you ideal it? How would you land it, uh, like uh, Simone Biles? Oh, wow. Well, Ross and I are huge affirmation seekers, so anytime we can get two compliments, we'll absolutely take it. <laughs> yeah, we're utilitarian like that. Two is greater than one. Two is okay. greater than one. Yeah. Yeah. They're token compliments. They're token. These days- I'm sorry, I'm look, sorry to tell you the truth here. It depends on who it's coming from. We did this whole episode on radical candor. It's like, if I know the person loves me and like wants, mm -hmm. like is doing it from a caring place, say anything to me. Say it as directly as you want. Just- eviscerate me. <laughs> I, That's fine. I, I think I see a third circle here which we can all find happiness with. Jack and you guys on the What's compliment the sandwich. Circle? A compliment open face sandwich. So it's only <laughs> one, so it's one it's compliment. Oh, I, this is good. Make it I open like face. that. And one criticism. <laughs> this is it. So that way it's you know more of an authentic compliment which yes. makes you happy, Jack. Yeah. And you're still getting a, a compliment, Natalie and Ross and yeah. yeah. I do the self-deprecation sandwich. I'll start with like, <laughs> just before I give this feedback, I hate myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I'm and i at fault for giving you this feedback. Here's what you need to work this on. This is a me problem. And at the end of the day, it's still a me problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait. I can't even do what I just told you that you should do. Guys, yeah. what about the compliment club sandwich, <laughs> which is three compliments, but two criticisms? I like it. The more. ratios are still working in your favor, and you're yeah. getting three compliments. But that now, sounds like a PIP. But Ross wouldn't be able to give three compliments to anyone. I have never so. said three nice things to anyone. <laughs> Ross, Ross has said one nice thing to me our whole relationship, so yeah. that would be really hard. And I, I like, <laughs> that's stumbled out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it actually was kind of backhanded. Yeah. <laughs> so. That would be impossible. I have a question from the studio. What is some of the best feedback that you've gotten recently? Jack told me I had to fix my eye by this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a hot compress. Um, Stop being so humble. Well, no, not humble. Like self-deprecating. I joke yeah, about yeah. self-deprecating, but I have had to learn to just be proud of what I've done and like I, it's okay to be successful and I don't have to always tear myself down. I think that's probably a woman problem. Um, mm -hmm. But I definitely have learned to like, I would meet a fan and they'd be like, I love your stuff. I'm like, shut up. No, you don't. <laughs> Why do you watch that crap? Like I, it's really? horrible and it would be, it would actually like hurt my brand to not just be like, oh, thank you so much. And I love what success. I do. Own the success. Yeah. Next up, work from home camera on or off? On. Always on. On. Do you hate that? I do hate that. I, I, go I love off, to I go take off. a walking phone call. Yeah, me too. I, I do it all the time. Well, that's totally fine. And, and that's established as a walking phone call probably, yeah. right? Like, Should do I, what you yeah, want. I kind of announce it. If I I'm going to... Yeah. Sorry for the wind interference. It's because I'm on a walk by the Totally. Lake. Don't also, lie. Really let's go back to pre-pandemic. Pretty much all those calls were not Zoom calls. They were off camera. They were phone calls. Yeah. And so yeah. I feel like there's a context. If you entered the workforce before the pandemic, that Dude, you're great, more comfortable with phone Great point. Calls. I had a 
bajillion conference calls in the pre Zoom. I era. used to just walk around Union Square in yeah. Manhattan taking calls without doing a, a your camera. Steps in. Yeah. Also, it is funny because all of us are like on camera all day. I'm kind of like, I kind of want to save my camera vibe for Jack. Oh, good. That's nice. That's <laughs> so nice of you. Yeah. That's like the Meanwhile, one guy you could probably Jack. be off camera. Meanwhile, when, Rod, <laughs> when Ross wants to chat, I'm like, you can send me a voice memo. Yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> I'm just I'm off to like send a Send me Morse mate. code, Ross. And, and your camera's on and then their camera's off. You're like, oh. See, that's the thing. That's and the it worst. feels a little you bit disrespectful. Turn, right. It is Unless you're naming it and saying, hey, I'm, I'm really sick today, guys. Like, or, I, or I've got some reason why I need to be off camera. In fact, Camera off is a predictor of people leaving a company, like are really? more highly likely to leave a company. I heard this. That's a very interesting stat. So it's more like in the group saying, if it's like one on one and you know whatever, you've got a good relationship. Mm. I'm you're sure halfway you just, quiet quitting if you're turning your camera. Right. Yeah, you totally. are. You're you're you are. Or you're working on something. Working. Else. You're doing. You're just no, doing something. We, else. Yeah, you got a mouse jiggler once before. Yeah, yeah we yeah, saw yeah. the telltale signs of a quiet quitting. Yeah, included a lot of camera. So off. so totally. camera off is is quiet quitting. <laughs> quitting. <laughs> camera off is quiet quitting. Camera on is loud laboring, which yes. we, we thought was the okay. opposite, which is exactly. when you're going the extra effort to like remind people that you're doing a whole lot of work that day. <laughs> I well, love that. Yeah. I agree. It's important also like in the new age where you don't get a lot of FaceTime with True. people, like yeah. how you come off your nonverbal cues are mm. important to how people perceive you. Totally. You know, if you're working from home, you know, you can't be the first one in the office. Unless you send an early Slack message. So I guess you try to overcompensate with yeah. camera schedule. On the other hand, yeah. Zoom fatigue is a real thing. Like, it is physically exhausting moving all those muscles in your face all day. Mm, I mean, Jack and I do it for two hours straight recording the show. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of movement. So if you have, like, four or five calls and you're doing all of that movement in your face... Yeah, and I just resort to Botox personally. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's my kind of. I heard it's all like frozen for you. Yeah, it's frozen. So I don't have any facial movement. Yeah. Really. You actually <laughs> warn people. I have to, it's in the calendar invite. You to remind them. Totally. Yeah. You're like, not going to see my eyebrows. It's move, not but. resting bitch face. It's just me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's just the, the Botox. preventative Botox. Preventative yeah. hair loss products. Yeah. Most genius marketing plays ever. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, your market went from not you know five percent of the country. It went to the entire country. Yeah. Just in case. Also, yeah. corporate case. Botox would make so much sense because then there's less pressure to like have these emotional reactions to stuff on the business calls, <laughs> right? We, because no one's making any facial. Movements. We get a lot of questions about that. Yeah. How do I change my facial expressions? Yeah, Botox. Well, don't. <laughs> yeah. How about you just don't have any at all? <laughs> <laughs> mitigate that right off the right off the rip. All right, last and final guys, thought leading on LinkedIn. Ross is this LinkedIn. feels directly targeted. Ross is the LinkedIn guy. <laughs> I'll, I'll defer to you. I, humbled and honored to answer this question, Ross. Humbled and honored to answer this question. I think for the most part, most thought leaders on LinkedIn are full of it. Mm. And the people who are best at executing their job are busy executing their job. Wow. I okay. do think there is advantages to having a strong brand on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm just going to say it. It's the, it's the platform of the future. I'm sorry. More it than is. any other social media. Like, we're talking with two people who have millions of followers uh, across social media, but LinkedIn is your bet. For working professionals, mm -hmm. yes. And so what should you do if you're trying to build a brand on LinkedIn? Are you, you know, sharing your accomplishments or are you commenting on the news, both? What are you doing? I think it's like having a perspective on something that you're potentially an expert in, something you know a lot about. I mean, everyone gets hung up on, what do I need to do? What do I got to post? I mean, I think it's just... And it's with any content being authentic to who you are and what your world is about mm. yeah. and just taking a stance. I mean, there can be news stories and offer your opinion. And so it, reacting you know, to current reacting events. Reacting to things. You don't need current, to go on there yeah. and humbled and honored. Or your job. I mean, and your, yeah, your work and your job is like so much of what you do and what you know. Mm -hmm. And people are like, I want to be a content creator. I want to start with like posting. Where do I start? You don't have to start on TikTok and film yourself. You can just write a written post on LinkedIn and like talk about your job. Mm -hmm. I think it's no, very you know? easy, low barrier to entry. Mm. Have you seen the parties that some people host where they do a PowerPoint presentation sharing with their friends what they actually do for work? Yes. Yes. Hilarious. Love that. Hilarious. I haven't seen these next year. Okay. So literally people will get together and they'll have a party where, you know, everyone will come over with all dinner and drinks, but each person also brings a PowerPoint presentation that explains what they do for work, and then they present it to the entire audience of their friends mm. at that dinner. Mm. And that actually is something that'd be great to post on LinkedIn, because you realize totally. that your buddies don't know what you do every day. No. No. I your think she works too? at this company. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our parents what do you don't do? totally get what we're doing all that. Radio, <laughs> but on the internet. Yeah. It's radio. <laughs> <laughs> radio on the internet. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. Well, the first thing we wanted to know from you guys, because we've been following you for so long, is who are we actually speaking with and interviewing today? Are we speaking and interviewing with Ross and Natalie or Corp and Corporate Natalie? Tell us what it's like to have chosen a character who is your public persona, and how is that different from your actual selves? And ironically, a character that's all about the corporate world which you guys also actually worked in. 
It's crippling. <laughs> we wake up every day. We're like, who are we? Yeah. We're you looking look in, in the, the mirror. mirror. I'm putting my makeup on. Which I'm, one I'm shedding I? a tear. Like I still don't know yeah. to this day. Yeah. It's like the Joker. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot like the Joker. I think you want to start? No, no. I, look, Queen, please. Thank you so much, King. I think <laughs> that for me, I play a lot of different characters. Yeah. And like how I always talk about real Natalie versus yeah. corporate Natalie. I think for me, corporate Natalie started as, we see a lot on TikTok, like the victim mentality. And like mm. like very, we make fun of, oh my God, this sucks. We're, working sucks. Corporate sucks. We're working from home. This is yeah. horrible. And so a lot of the humor that I think my channel shows is like, I'm the victim and like, you know, screw big corporate kind of okay. thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest difference between real Natalie and corporate Natalie is like, I actually loved climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. I worked really hard you at what I did. Corporate boot, I like. was in consult, licking corporate boot. <laughs> like I was in <laughs> consulting, like work was hard and I was early in my career and I was okay with that. I you loved working it. eight hours a week. Yeah, totally. Awesome. I really enjoyed it. And so I think that's the biggest difference is something I grapple with now is like, but the content that's relatable is like, screw corporate. But then in reality, I'm like, thank you corporate for giving me corporate Natalie. So you started your character while you were still working as full-time corporate Natalie. Yes. Now I'm just, just a fraud because I don't work a full-time <laughs> job anymore. Does yeah. that make, how does that feel? Like when, if you're putting out content, does that feel authentic or does it feel challenging or do you feel like there's a real element to it, even if it conflicts with the real version of you? Yeah. I mean, we're asked this all the time. I think Ross and I both like are entrepreneurs. Yeah. We are on Zoom calls every day with our teams, with the brands we work with. Like we're still, you know, in corporate in yeah. some sense and we get these stories and we also have followers who feed us like content all the time of their day-to-day -day lives. So yeah. um, definitely feel like, yes, am I not going to the office nine to five every day? No, but like, do I... You know, am you're, I informed? Yes. You're not even just entrepreneurs. You guys are running a business. Like when we had a call with your team to prep for this interview, like everyone was all hands on deck, four person team, ready to go, notes, super organized. You, yeah, it's corporate. I guess that that term has almost like a, a a darker, heavier element to it. But you're business leaders, and that's what you're doing. Honored. I mean, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> honored. I mean, we also believe in being professionals, and mm. when we deal with brands or we deal with folks like you who are generous enough to bring you on your podcast. We want to show up and show out and, you know, bring it all there. So I think that's one of the things that I've noticed is this idea of being professional, although it's frowned upon for us is kind of table stakes. And mm. there's a lot of brands who work with creators and other folks who are like, yeah, they don't show up. They don't deliver these things. And we're like, what? That's even, that's an option. You can just like not do yeah. those this things. Is deliverable <laughs> and we had a deadline. Like, we, are, uh, we are like corporate first, creator second. Like we came from the corporate world. So yeah. naturally mm -hmm. some of those values were instilled <laughs> for better or worse. The trauma was definitely instilled. Yeah. <laughs> so you speak both corporate and you resonate with the employee, hundred percent. That's course. unique. And how? Yeah. How has that unique position like helped you talk to brands and and get deals? I know you recently had the show where you interviewed a CEO to humanize that person in front of their employees. Right. That was really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I can speak from the speak sales perspective. That. All I was, my whole job was trying to reach out to executives and leaders and sell them things. Yeah. So I think sales, just generally speaking, that that skill set has translated to to this. We we're still reaching out to people. We're still trying to speak to leaders and speak on their level. And yeah. you know, that's I think more or less what led to us getting to work with Henry Shuck, the CEO of Zoom Info, and getting to interview him. We were able to take the somewhat childish approach of some hilarious uh atypical questions that he would normally get as a CEO, but then mm -hmm. also make commentary on their acquisitions and their stock price and yeah. you know what it's like to make difficult decisions as a CEO. So now you're, own, you're your own bosses, you're running your own business, and you've built an entire career off of videos. Really, the entire business that you guys have run is off of these incredibly hilarious, relatable corporate videos that are making fun of the corporate world in a way that honestly we haven't seen since... TPS reports in office space. <laughs> if you haven't seen corporate Natalie on Instagram, she'll do a whole video about the inane small talk that happens before a Zoom conversation. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. how your boss says, I'm actually just going to go on mute. Is that okay if we wait and don't talk until <laughs> yeah. the meeting starts? So, and then Ross will share getting a three on his performance review because, and I quote, nobody gets four or five. <laughs> yeah. Something you have to get a raise I felt if they so that. seen by that. You have to get a raise yeah. if you get a four or five. So we were curious. Because your entire career and all this huge growth and followership you guys have gained is based off videos, like what was your first video? When, when did you know that it was clicking and you'd found something? My first video, I was, was on Vine, six seconds. Uh, I was working at Oracle and um, we used to wear these headsets that were wired. 
you know, we didn't have Bluetooth back then. And uh, <laughs> you would forget like you were wearing. Defensive coordinator. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, yeah, you're wearing, like, you look like a helicopter pilot. Uh, Roger that, Houston, Houston. Yeah, and you take it off, you put it on your neck, and you're typing whatever, and someone says, hey, you want to go grab coffee or grab lunch? And you say, yeah, I do. And you stand up, and it just chokes you. It, it, it clotheslines <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. You know, I was like, why are we not, uh, we got to talk about this. Or the, the the chair that leans back too far, you know, that split, split second, you're going to die. Like, yeah. Oh, God, I'm <laughs> fall, but it doesn't. You know, like those little yeah. things that would just happen every day. Yeah. I need like, to see some of those vines. That's hilarious. I look very different back then. I'm sure. I'm I sure. still had hope in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little twinkle. My first video was a day in the life. I was consuming content on TikTok and seeing these like gorgeous, hot influencers waking up and like, I, d- I drink my matcha. I meditate. Yeah. I do my daily affirmations. I'm like, I wake up one minute before my alarm, <laughs> yeah. sprint to my desk. Like I am miserable. I'm trying to make my bed look presentable. <laughs> I eat a slice of cheese in between meetings. Yeah, so I, like, yeah. I flip the trend on its head and then yeah. it, was, like, it got a lot of views. But. So you're creating video content that yeah. is just relatable to yeah. everybody who has a job. Absolutely. It, it's yeah. just that, like you guys said, we're saying what everybody's thinking. This idea yeah, yeah. of professional to me was always so, uh, such a farce. And I know I mentioned some of like the behaviors of being a professional. I still stand by those. But this mm-hmm. idea that we don't bring our true selves to work. Like we're all thinking these things. We're doing these absolutely outrageous. I was working in this building, all salespeople, 4,000 salespeople across the street from the beautiful campus that Oracle has that you yeah. can see from the freeway. And everybody was 20 to 40 selling million dollar deals to Fortune 100 companies. And nobody knew what we were selling. Nobody understood what we were doing. Yeah, Everyone's wearing poorly fitted clothes. The place <laughs> smells like a locker room. And I was like, why has nobody told me that this exists Yeah, until now? Now I'm living it. I'm in business development. I didn't know what that meant. Totally. Yeah. I just showed up and had to make cold calls. I was like, oh, this is life. This is what I got to do now. Yeah. So I just wanted to, I don't know. It was catharsis for me because it was tough and miserable and made me feel better. And I think so, Ross and I are both like entertainers at our core. Yeah. We, we like to say we're the middlers of the dinner table. Like okay. we'll always, yeah. you know, tell the jokes, the story. So it's not far off for us to like want to be in front of the camera. Mm. I think a lot of people are like, I want to be a creator. Like I want to do this. We're like, do you like filming yourself? Do you like, yeah, you like, because we are so into, do we're you have always shame? on. Do you have shame? <laughs> yeah. Are you okay being hated? Because like, we had to put that all aside. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But nobody we, hates we do us like more it. than us, though. We like nobody hates us more than us, but we <laughs> like it at our core. What were the inflection points where you realized you're not just a middler who can entertain the table, you're not just a relatable worker, but like you could maybe make money off this? I mean, the brand deals. It was the Dell story. Were crazy. The first, the first one. The first company that reached out to me, one of the first, was yeah. Dell. Oh, Dell Computer. I don't know yeah. if you've heard of Huge. that. It's like a small, small. like Dude, startup. You're, you're getting, getting a Dell, a Dell deal. Yeah. And I was working. They were like, "We saw your computer is a Dell laptop." And I, nice. I screenshot the nice email. I sent it to my parents. I'm like, "Is this phishing? Like, I'm worried about <laughs> right. clicking on this. What's <laughs> happening?" And I ended up partnering with Dell on like a huge deal that just changed my life. And I partnered with them for three years. And I just like couldn't believe that I was working with this company that they wanted to work with me. And I think they, oh. when Ross and I started, and Ross started earlier, but in 2020, you're realizing these like B2B partnerships and influencer partnerships. And mm. that's what we kind of frame ourselves as, as B2B influencers. And so we were able to work with these big companies with bigger budgets. And we were like, wow, this is a job. We can make money on this. So mm. Dell would be my kind of first aha moment. I didn't do an ad for about five years. And that was a choice. So I, you hadn't monetized your following, but you were just focused on the content? I just I was just focused on the content. So part of it was I played independent minor league baseball for two years out of school. And as soon as I was getting paid to do it, it was a lot less fun. Hmm. I was playing for my job every time I did every time I pitched, I was like, if I fail, I could get cut by the coach as soon as this game's over. Wow. Yeah. And that was not as fun. And as soon as you're making branded content and things that don't feel true to the artist in your soul, it feels like you're going against the grain. It feels inauthentic. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so I was nervous to do it, but eventually I got over the hump. I sold out super hard. Yep. You know, I'm doing ads for Salesforce. <laughs> I mean, now I am who now I'm hundred percent corporate bro. Yeah. No, not really, but I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it's been kind of a, a journey getting over that and realizing that there's, I think we can totally relate to that. You know, Jack and I always talk about like the rich versus King mantra of like, you can be rich or you can be King on certain things. King as, like, is a founder. having full control and autonomy over everything you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you might not be able to make money that way. Rich is you take a deal, but it comes with strings attached, mm. and now you have to follow certain rules. Mm. We like going the king route and having control because we also think that monetization follows great content. Yep. And that if you focus on the monetization too early, the content is off. It's headed in the wrong direction. But if you focus on the content first and make that great content, 
the monetization does follow. So the rich in, follows the king. Our inflection point was similar. We wrote our daily email newsletter yep. as a side hustle for two years without having an ad deal. We literally wow. were both working at banks and then Jack and I, we would email each other at the end of the day about what stories we were going to cover in the newsletter and we'd turn it white because we're like, huh, they're not going to notice if we email each other in white text. And then, <laughs> no <laughs> no way. Way. Catch that. Stop it. So they're like, why is that like invisible yeah. ink and then you have to highlight it to see what you're <laughs> like Every day after the markets oh, close, you send a blank email to your buddy Jack. Well, I think the worst part was my boss would walk behind me and be like, why is Jack looking at a blank screen. <laughs> I'm getting really excited. I'm like, oh yeah, this is a good story. All righty. So anyway, we had an advertiser approach us, just like you, Natalie. Yeah. And uh, that made the decision easy for us to mm -hmm. come clean to our bosses, to declare the outside business activity with yeah. compliance. We got approved for all that. Yeah, and we did. It, it grew and grew, but do you feel like, I mean, Ross and I still talk about it to, the, to this day, like when we say we're influencers or content creators or yeah. podcasters, whatever it might be, people are like, what? Like, I feel how, ill. How do you make ends meet? Yeah, yeah. I feel ill. And it's like, there is money in this I, world. I, I, I Having influence out. is that's the number why, one tool. That's why Molly says we're in entertainment. Because she's like, people always say like, oh, they can make a career out of podcasting. She's like, yeah, they're they like, can. Guys like kind of a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. kind of a pretty sick one. It must be a lot on you, Molly. But yeah, the entertainment's kind of left it ambiguous and like, a kind of generic uh, Hollywood element. Let's say that. Let's say we're in entertainment. Yeah. I like that. I, I like this a lot too because I always yeah. say I host a daily podcast with my buddy Nick and then like, oh, oh yeah. And I say, yeah, it's a full-time cool. job. But when yeah. you throw in, yeah, I'm doing it with my best friend Jack. They're like, that is so cute. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Your yeah. roommate. <laughs> totally. Oh. It's like, oh, charitable work. It's like, no, it's a full-time job. Uh, yeah. Jack likes it a lot. Yeah. But I, I, think, I think the fact that all of us, you know, created for years mm -hmm. before ever making any money speaks to a crucial decision point for people thinking about creating, which yeah. is you must have more than just financial incentive. Mm -hmm. yes. If you're just doing it to try to make money, the chances are, the chances are you're not going to make money because everyone can post something. Yeah. Um, so we, we always be a creator before an influencer. Yeah. Right. That's like, a great way to put it. Great way to put it. And even for us, when yeah. we wrote our, our daily email newsletter. Like I believed it was making us smarter about the markets. We're better now because speak of more it. intelligently Love at that. work would impress clients because I knew what the Fed was up to. Yeah. So we love doing it. Like there's that Warden study about how grit being the most critical element of success. Yep. It was grit producing every day. Like we say consistency consistently delivers. Yeah. But like we also love doing it. And that was key. So it was grit and a love of doing something. And the videos you were creating, you must have gotten joy out of like seeing your buddies' reactions and the comments. Oh, that must have been so satisfying. That's the reason to do it. I was prepping yeah. for this interview and I was like reminiscing on the first videos and I was like, I remember loving this. Emotional ROI. <laughs> like, I emotional remember ROI. when this was so like fun and fulfilling and mm. it still is, but it's a job now more so. And so mm. like, it's rarely, we'll, we'll have that one video that we're like, God, we loved making that. And like, those yeah. are the precious moments. But when I was first starting, it doesn't Every, perform. Everything I made, <laughs> yeah, and then no one watches it. Everything I made and when I was first starting out, it just made, brought me so much joy. Yeah. Mm. Remember, if a video doesn't perform, it wasn't us. It wasn't you. It was the algorithm. 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 Also, also, it every time. Year, it'll probably blow up. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's all about timing. <laughs> it was like, for me, it was I would do it nights and weekends, and so I would get whoever, and even still in most of my videos, it's friends and family. Whoever's willing to come to an office with me on the weekend or mm. night. Yeah. You know, and I got kicked out of offices. I, you know, had to solicit the fans. Who's got an office I can film in? And, um, wow. you know, it was a weird journey back then doing it on the side. My employer was like, we're going to allow you to film here, but you need to explain like, what is this? <laughs> got the HR walk around the park. Yeah. yeah. One of the yeah. first times we filmed together, Ross was like, okay, meet me 8 a.m. Saturday in this yeah. office. I'm like, hang on, I'm hungover. Um, <laughs> I'm 23 years old and I went out last night. So that's going to be hard, but we, Ross, we whose wedding it. was it that you recorded that video about? My Pitch cousin. Sales. Okay, so did you have to discuss with your cousin, like, hey, I know you're getting married, but I'm going to film a bunch of yes. viral videos <laughs> well, she was from like, your wedding about do. corporate like, life. We're here. We're yeah. paying for the venue. Might as well get something out of it. <laughs> That's you good. Know? That's I was good. like, well, wedding Great is cousin. sort of part of that. But yeah. It's actually a write-off now that you've recorded all that yeah. content. The whole thing, yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote off the plane flight. <laughs> you're like, I'm expensive. <laughs> I did. Venue. I did. You got to do. We're running a business here. Quick, how do we make this about me? Well, guys, fortunately, we have an awesome group of Yetis and Besties who you've gotten to know, and they have sent in some questions specific to corporate life for us to answer, and our awesome creative director, Rachel, is going to whip them up for us. Actually, funny detail we should point out, 
for all of the hotline episodes we've done where we do Q and A with the audience, everyone loves sending in audio messages because with audio messages, it's great. We hear the fans and we love getting them on the show. So we have all these great voices we get on the pod, but it's funny because this one's about like work and it's a little more sensitive. People want it to be more anonymous. So really, yeah. we don't have many audio messages. You should hear our voice Isn't submissions. That interesting? We get no audio messages. We ask our fans all the time and that's probably, that's the exact reason. They're, so they're nervous. This next question is from an anonymous writer. We'll call him Daryl. <laughs> I would love your advice on a tough situation at work. The new VP has asked me to leave three times, and until she got here, I've had zero negative feedback. Since the deal I had committed for this quarter got pushed in exporter, she's questioning my abilities. She's saying that three levels of leadership and my client all feel the same way. I have two options, accept a severance package or face a pit. She's made it clear she doesn't want me here. What would you do in this situation? Thanks for the help, guys. So let's start by defining a PIP here, because this is a question about someone who their manager thinks they're underperforming, and they disagree, and now they may be put on a PIP. PIP, Performance Improvement Plan. Yes. Often a death sentence. Yeah, this is the core explain for us? Yeah, sprinkle on some context. Yeah, so in sales, and this, these do exist uh, in other functions, but oftentimes a PIP is basically your last chance. You'll, you'll agree on some metrics, some numbers that you need to hit, and if you don't hit them, you're gone. And that way, it's not a surprise to you. It's not a surprise to the company. It's also a really good way to not get paid severance. Uh, yeah, so, it's kind of CYA, right, for the company, because then they feel like they've given you the warning that a layoff could come. Yeah, CYB, yeah, they're cover less your booty. To be sued. Yeah. 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 And, and at the end of the day, most people do not survive PIPs, and those who do, I mean, this VP sounds they're, like they're being very honest. They don't want them there. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Yeah. I'm out. I'm, I'm using, you could take the PIP and then spend time interviewing. That's what I normally tell people if you're going to take the PIP. But oftentimes, you know, what's that Sevy looking like? So your, your advice to Daryl uh, is if your VP want, thinks you got to go and it's either you take the severance package or take a PIP, they should go. Most VPs aren't that honest. And that's a very nice thing that they're doing as wow. savage as it is. It's very transparent. You're it's saying. very transparent. So, I mean, if you're not wanted there and your VP is, the chances of you moving up, slim. I mean, unless you suddenly turn around, you're closing a bunch of business and you're the top dog, then you get away with anything and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're being honest. Natalie, I mean, what do you think? Take the severance package, get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my worst nightmare is not being welcomed or wanted in, a, in an environment. Yeah. Like, girl at the dinner table who were all like, oh God, why'd she come? She yeah. bring, get me out of there. I don't want to ever be that person. Like, that is, and if you're getting that transparency and your boss doesn't like, like want you there, yeah. get out. Is there any potential... It sounds like Daryl is saying everyone at the company he believes actually likes him. And it's kind of just like his boss. Is there any getting around the boss? Any redemption option? You or is there any like, you know, I think Daryl said he went to HR and didn't go anywhere. But is there any ally that he can seek in the company before taking the severance package and getting out of there and seeing if there's any way to get reassigned or? I mean, if it's your VP, it's going to be real hard to go around your VP because that's probably his boss's boss if not boss's boss's boss. So, I mean, you can have those conversations. You can be proactive. I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're going to be transitioned out one way or another. So it's how do you build a really positive brand on your way out so mm. that people have your back, so that people give you letters of rec that might introduce you to someone else. And you can kind of blame it on a poor situation versus your lack. Your I like that. Yeah. And, own the and what did you say? It's harder to rebrand or it's harder to change someone's perception of you. Yes. It, like, that's, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. So get at like, pivot to a new role. Yes. Great point. Perception is really hard to change. Absolutely. Really hard. A Yeti actually sent us something from an earlier hotline episode that kind of works here. Uh, they mentioned that uh, at Fidelity, there was someone who had a concept that we kind of rebranded to the three L's, but basically if you're in a job and you're not learning, laughing, or leaving a mark, you don't want to be there. And maybe for Daryl, it's time to think about, hey, am I learning? Am I laughing? And am I leaving a mark? Am I contributing? Because if I'm not, then maybe it isn't the right place for me in three years. And then why am I there right now? It sounds like he's not getting any of those three L's. Yeah. yeah. And if he takes the severance package, he'll have some financial runway to you know, come up with his story, update his resume, describe why he's leaving the previous job. Yep. And unemployment rate's super low. There's lots of great jobs mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Also, from the manager's perspective, great job pointing out that that was awesome transparency from the VP on like what's going on. Because I remember... When I was at my lowest working in finance, before Jack and I got to have this incredible job together, um, I like had a mid-20s crisis. Not like a midlife crisis, but I turned 25, and I'm like, I'm in a job in finance I don't like. 
I don't know what I want to do. Friends are going to business school. I haven't even taken a GMAT yet. Like, I don't know what to do. And a manager sat me down and did not give me that transparency. They were yeah. like, you're not happy. And I was like, I don't, at 25, I didn't know how to respond to that. Oh, I'm not? Uh, so the crying, <laughs> then was, was that the giveaway? I got or? Yeah. I think I was like, no, I am happy. I am happy. I'm I like, love this no, job. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to do these spreadsheets anymore. <laughs> and so the transparency from that VP is awesome. If I worked at a bank and the VP had been that transparent, I still would have left. <laughs> but I wouldn't have been as upset as I was in my mid-20s. Just to stand up for Daryl for a second. Yeah. He seems to believe that it's undeserved. Mm -hmm. The Good reviews point. he's getting from it his It may VP. be. It, it may, may be. be. But I want to point like out that he said my VP, the client, and at least three other people. So it's not just one personal vendetta. Good point. I do yeah. want to say that about Daryl. Not, to, But continue. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Continue sticking I up I didn't for hear a lot of business being closed either. <laughs> I heard like the one deal that was sort of hinging a lot of things pushed a quarter, which does yeah. happen. Yeah. But unfortunately, the reality is in sales, you are your number. Okay. And if you don't have a track record at that place, at the company, whatever, you're, it's hard to overcome. Okay. I mean, winning stick cures up, all Stick ends. up for, for Daryl just in case so we don't get canceled again. <laughs> <laughs> no. To stick up for Daryl, you can just have a boss who just doesn't like you. Yes. And, and that yeah. sucks. And yeah. it's not going to work out at the company. We work for bosses, not for companies. So we work for either, people. That's a great line. But, you either need to find a new boss at the company, which probably won't happen. Unless you somehow find a reassignment or, what, or you got to get out of there. What was the example you were sharing with me earlier? Well, Nick and I at Robin Hood, we had a boss who we just did not get along with. Um, they didn't understand what we were doing. Because remember, Nick and I were acquired as a media company joining a fintech company. So we were surrounded by fintech people mm -hmm. trying to explain to them how media worked. Yeah. And we persuaded a lot of people about you know how to grow the audience and, and gain trust and yeah. open rates are key and we're going to make a typo here and there. But we're gonna correct them. Yeah. Like we actually have a really good like no type. And, and this rate. word choice does matter, and, and we do want to spend really twenty matters. minutes choosing it. <laughs> um, but our boss just did not understand, and we were really struggling for a while. We did a lot of work to try to educate about the media that we were working on, and and the newsletter and the podcast that we were running. Um, ultimately, we we hit like a loggerhead, and we we're getting our own performance review. We knew we were going to get bad performance reviews. <laughs> like we preempted this, this VP PIP or severance option, but then Nick and I gave a performance review to our boss. Yeah. Counter and, and we honestly just, we put it all out there and knowing that later, their boss would read it, knowing that their boss would read it. So again, I'm talking to Daryl who thinks that the VP is unjustly, you know, giving them, if there's an opportunity to, to speak up to somebody else in the company, as long as it's not going to kill your chance for a severance package for Nick and me, we had a new boss three months later, and we got promoted. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. And we got a big budget to build a new podcast studio. It was like, yeah, it was pretty inspiring. Also, like, I really felt great about what we pulled off. Also, there. a cool thing. I mean, Jack and I are lucky because we were best friends working on the same thing together. But that transparency, there is power in employees kind of coordinating a little bit. Like yep. you and I coordinated we did and we you, did. you bring the evidence a lot of what we say mm, is like specifics. don't just complain about i want a better lifestyle and i'm not making enough money or like i you know i don't like going into the office whatever say i'm actually really productive working from home great point. i've i've brought i've closed this deal i've br i've done this project internally like bring the proof points so you're not just whining you're actually coming with evidence which i'm sure yeah. you guys did i would have loved to see the, the performance review problems, you came out you know? <laughs> what you say? bring solutions not problems absolutely you know? be a problem say. solver yeah. Thank you so much, Daryl, for the question, and I love this feedback. This question is from an anonymous writer. We'll call him Dimitri. <laughs> How do you think I love of these them? names? <laughs> Baby, names from, names. Baby names, names from 1980. Baby names from 1980. From 1980, Bulgaria. <laughs> Eastern Europe. Okay, she's been watching do too much Olympics. Yeah. we'll call them <laughs> yeah. Dimitri. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm a hot job. I'm currently an individual contributor and waiting for about a year for my promotion. Recently, there have been quite a few changes in management, leaving a manager position empty. In the future, I want to be a people manager and not an individual contributor. Should I jump and take this opportunity and throw away three years of work, or should I wait, get promoted, and get a higher management position? I appreciate your thoughts, besties. Okay. First, let's distinguish between individual contributor and manager. Yeah. How do you see the difference, Natalie? 
individual contributor. You can do your work. You're not in a ton of meetings. You just are mm -hmm. like making, I was that at Deloitte. I was just making PowerPoints mm -hmm. every week. And you like I was, I was doing the work. Doing, 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 doing. Management, you have people below you. Mm -hmm. You have to do performance reviews. You have to care about their well being. What else? <laughs> you, you literally have to care about them as people, which Oops. is remember their birthdays, <laughs> which <Yeah>. is frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ross, what I miss. Can you define it? No, I mean, like, yes, you're exactly right. Individual contributors, they're doing the granular work. Managers are managing a bunch of people who are doing the granular work. You are to, there to empower the people to mm. do their work and make them make your team better than the sum of its parts. And, you know, different people need different things and making sure they're getting those things. Individual, individual contributor, you worry about yourself. Right. The stuff you need to get done. So if I was understanding this correctly, is this, is Dimitri... Big D, um, <laughs> trying to leave the company for another IC role or are they going for a different management role? Dimitri wants to know if they should pursue an individual contributor role or a management role. Making the jump into management is a hard thing to do with no experience. And it's like, how do I get that experience without getting the opportunity? I would always take the role. If that's the step in the direction I want to go in the long run, I absolutely take that role. I learn some new things. I learn management. Agreed. I want to do a quick analogy to describe individual contributor versus manager. I would love to hear Please. an analogy. Whip it up, Jack. Tom Brady is an individual contributor. Yep. Bill Belichick is a manager. Mm. I want to point that out because when Nick and I were oh, this is good. good. I know you're going to say the managers really had an element of superiority complex. They I would did. say, yeah. And there was a sense everyone felt it that the managers were like, "That's what you wanted to become." But I just want to point out. Tom Brady made more money than Bill Belichick. Great point. And if you're so a true. top performer doing yeah. the core thing of the company, like the designers at Apple who are designing the iPhone, like yeah. that is an individual contributor. Yeah. Uh, the engineers at Meta, those are individual contributors. It is not a second tier role. No, it is not. I love being an individual contributor. Yep. We host our podcast, mm -hmm. we produce our show. We once had an opportunity to become managers, yeah. we would have had to stop producing our show. Not a chance no. that was going to happen. I think good managers do give the ICs glory. I think oh, they and they should. Um, and I prefer to say Steve Kerr versus Steph Curry. You know, real <laughs> impact. Um, and I'll that is how I describe. It. I would rather. I'm actually Steve a Giants Curry. fan. My brother's going to kill me for mentioning Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's it, it is interesting because in sales it's a little more obvious. The best salespeople make the most money, and the people who manage them make a lot less. Mm. Interesting, right? And so if you're excited by helping people maximize their potential, then you want to go into management. It should be more selfless. It should be about gassing up your your you know your ICs because at the end of the day, if they do well, you you look good. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a completely different skill set, as you mentioned. Yeah. Natalie, on the creator side, do you feel like you can be both a manager and an individual contributor? Absolutely, mm -hmm. for sure. And I and I think the point you made of you can be both and the managers I love the most in my career have been the ones that roll their sleeves up and get some work done. Nice. Oh, They're like, let me yeah. take that. Yeah. Let me, let me build that PowerPoint now. I'm like, mm, Oh my 100%. God, thank you so much. Like you can actually do work too. You don't just delegate as a full-time job. Great point. Inspiring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Wasn't Dara, the CEO of Uber, didn't he drive Ubers for like a good stint? I think oh, he was I like building that. the Ford Allegedly. The Toyota Camrys. <laughs> Allegedly, he was hopping in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Driving a little bit. No, that's a great point. To be a great manager, I think you should know what you to be contributing contributors a bit. do. Yeah. And not just know what they do, but have done it yourself. Absolutely. There is one distinction, though, because a lot of top sales reps will be horrible managers. A lot of great players, you know, you talk about it in professional sports, a lot mm. of the best players are terrible managers. It's the mm. players who are not that good. Mm. who learned how to coach and learned how to manage and those ended up being the most successful. Yeah, it's I just it's a similar. sales manager who's made a cold call and knows how to do that, right? Like, love, would love to have one of those. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> the VP who still cold calls, you kidding me? That'd be wild. So do it the Michael Scott way. Be a salesperson first and then become the manager of the salespeople. My, Everything's sales. So my yeah. favorite comment I get on my videos sometimes is female Michael Scott. I mean, that is yeah. my goal in life. Like, I am honored. Yeah. <laughs> I am honored. All right, Rachel, what's next? Third question, what we got, Rach? This next question is from Jack Sai in New York City. What's your corporate trick shot? What is your corporate trick shot? Jack, can you whip up a definition there, please? A corporate trick shot is a hack in the workplace or in your career that has no or little cost but can have huge upside. So my corporate trick shot is, I think three of us went to business school. Natalie, did you go to B school? No, sorry, boys. School of hard knocks. <laughs> so secret to people- I learned by doing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie's managing us. <sighs> I dropped out. Anyway, secret to 
business school is that at least at Michigan, we spent a huge amount of time where everyone was just practicing pitching their personal story. Mm. Like basically their elevator pitch. Yeah. On and themselves. Spent, almost like the selling yourself, it sounds exactly. like. We, we practice mm. selling ourselves <laughs> and like boiling down our career story and what we were looking for in our careers into something less than two minutes. We wrote it. We edited it. We saw peer reviews of it. We <sighs> practiced it, practiced it, practiced it. So my corporate trick shot is just figuring out the story that feels good about you and mm. your career, um, taking pride in that story, figuring out a narrative that makes you feel good about yourself yeah. so that you're excited to tell people about it. Because at corporate events, in the hallways, in the bathroom, mm -hmm. you'll this have the sadness. opportunity where you meet somebody and it's like, you just need to have that story in your back pocket and be pumped to tell it because that will be a way that you advance your career. Low I cost, that. high return, that's the trick shot. Low Figure cost, investing your in your personal story, high return, that sells you in a way that gets you that dream job or that dream fund. And you have to love your story. Yeah. If you feel uncomfortable about your story yeah. or like anxious that it doesn't sound good, make it up. Change the story. <laughs> <laughs> the story Is that where you were going? Yes. That's not Absolutely. where I was okay. going. All right. In, uh, round up, round up. Find, find a different path about your story that fits the goals that you're looking for and that you feel good about. I love that. At Deloitte, they'd That's always great. say, like, that one time you're in the elevator with a partner, like, be ready for it. I was never Asian. in an elevator or with a partner. So <laughs> I don't know. It was when a one I'm story building. That, so. <laughs> 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 um, do you have a corporate trick shot? That is sadness embodied, though. Sales are dope, never ever stop selling. Yeah. All things, everything. Sorry, can you tell sadness again? Because I noticed it's on your LinkedIn account. Yeah. So sadness is my mantra, which is similar to ABC always be closing, which is sales are dope, never ever stop selling. Yeah. Sadness, that is. You're always selling. Yeah. Always, always be closing. Mm -hmm. And you know, and what better start, to sell than yourself? Than yourself, exactly. I think my my trick shot is building relationships that are also outside of your purview. So, mm. I would go get lunch with people on the marketing team, with the engineering team, the product team, even though I was in sales, and building those relationships um, actually opened up a lot of resources for me when I needed something. You know, it, you have to go through proper channels. No, I'll just walk over to their desk. They're my yeah. friend. And I can get things, um, and I can be more efficient. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, everything's a relationship. Yeah. So you're going to have lunch every day. You might as well have, have it with somebody. Yes. And it doesn't have to be the same. You know, your butt, your BFF at work. You can diversify that a little bit. Yes. And that you just learn a lot more about a business. It makes mm. you more more yeah, you well do. equipped you to understand what everything everything going on. So mine also has to do with networking. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of like. Co virtual coffee chats, networking. Yes. Like you're, you're always told, like, have your Rolodex of people and build your network. And it's like a little cringy. Uh -huh. And I think one tip for when people now, like I have calls with people or I have a call with a mentor, I always say give to get. Mm. So if you're taking their time, 30 minutes out of their day to pick their brain, I, I want to pick your brain. That's what we always say. Come with something. Hey, can I help you with anything? You're meeting with a content creator. I have these ideas for your channel. Someone like asked me to be their mentor. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's a big ass. Like, who are you? You're a random person. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I have all these ideas for your page. I'd love to talk to you and share them with you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, Samantha, would love to meet you. Let's set up time. Like, give a little bit. What are you working on? Any projects I can help with? Mm -hmm. Every time I join a call with someone where I'm picking their brain, I'm like, let's save five minutes at the end. I want to like tell you anything you want to do with influencer marketing. I can connect you with influencers, anything yeah. you want. Like, that helps them find value in it too. Cool. Bring value. Bring Give value. in order to get. Give in order to get. Don't be a taker. Okay, corporate trick shot. You know how in Italy the mafia is known as Cosa Nostra? Yeah. It means our thing. In That's, Italian. It means our thing? It means our thing. I didn't like, know that. Talk about it. It's our thing. Cosa you know? Nostra? Cosa I Nostra. Like dark house or dark night. I guess that does make sense. Yeah. Wow, okay. The limited no, Spanish I know, I know so. works there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the, in the same way that they have our thing, a trick shot in the corporate world is to have your thing. Have one thing that you're known for in the office that's a small thing, doesn't cost you much, but you'll notice that in office culture, people like to brand you as something, yeah. and if you can feed that narrative yeah. in an authentic way, it builds you up in the community in a high return yeah. way. Oh, you need a personality recommendation? Hires. Go to Nick. <laughs> right. Be, I, be a single point of failure. Like, the company yes. would not go on in that way well, if totally. you left. That's good, too. Yeah. I, at, uh, when I worked at Endeavor, so we would, you know, travel. We'd meet with startups around the world, so we were constantly traveling. And I was known for bring back kind of sweets from all these countries. <laughs> sweets guy. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I do, honestly, like, I, every weekend I'm having a Susie Cakes. I'm, I'm making cookies, and I love having desserts. And it became a thing at work where it was like, oh, if it's someone's birthday, just defer to Nick on where we should get the cupcakes from that day. Sprinkles? Or are we doing uh, Magnolia? 
And I would kind of become that go-to. And within the company, that cupcake enthusiasm kind of got me to Coupled introduce to a lot of price. people, including the CEO. <laughs> right? Stock price was and totally direct correlation. Like you're eating cupcakes. cupcakes every day, and you look like this. I would love any tips and tricks. You want to share. <laughs> it's like one uh, bite of the cupcake. Yeah, okay, <laughs> give it the rest to me. Got it. Give it the rest to me. Throws it away. I'm also a high icing to cake ratio guy, so I'll take the icing and I give the cake to Jack. It's oh, a nice okay. reciprocal okay. relationship. But now yeah, I heard you chirp agreed. in that become a single point of failure. That's not what. That's Nick's a great line, about. Nick. You're kind of talking about like networking wise or like yeah, office culture wise. Have your thing. Become known for you mean like. Find a role that the company needs done yeah. that only you can do. Definitely. And I think, I don't want to say you have to be an engineer that has a specific skill set or you can code in this language. That's, that would be ideal, that like they need <laughs> you in that way. But it can also be something like, you know everyone's birthday in the office and yeah. you are the person we oh, go to. Yeah. And like, it doesn't have to be yeah. technical. Yeah. But I did this thing, business continuity, when I first started my career that was like identifying single points of failure, the dude who knows all the passwords. Yeah. We got to oh. share those out. Like if he gets hit by a bus, the company's <laughs> crumbling. I said that about Jacqueline at, at the bank I worked for. She knew everything. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, Protect guys, Jacqueline. this is such a risk. That, you know, I was I was actually telling her she should like ask for a raise because she has so much power at this company. Yeah, totally. If that was Steph- her out, Stephanie. The tower is going to top. That's totally. a great goal. In fact, you should put that on a resume. Yeah. I was the single point of failure at blank institution yeah. for all the blank. That's I like that value. So oh, you know I, I was like value. the one American guy <laughs> at my bank, Nick. Yeah, who spoke German, and so. I didn't speak that good German at the time, but yeah. I spoke enough that my German like relationship managers could bring me the interpreter just in case there was like an American at the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> nice. like, I could sort of like yeah. entertain him. Yeah, it was a very like token role. Jack, talk to him about the Yankees. Yeah, but no, <laughs> it, it got me into a room with BMW, which was awesome. On like, the, I never yeah. would have gotten in that meeting. On you the flip side of that, yourself. don't say you have skills in Spanish if you don't habla <laughs> un poquito <laughs> <No> español <laughs> <laughs> because they will ask you. <laughs> yeah, they will. You want to be conversational you for sure. Yeah. You know, it's a funny financial trick shot. I actually saw the other day because we're talking about work. We're talking about corporate life. So we could mention Adam Grant, who's like just a great, brilliant mind, the business school professor. And he had this great concept he shared uh, that is backed up by research about pebbling. Pebbling is this concept that penguins do where they share a little pebble with each other and it makes the other penguins happy and keeps them closer knit as a community. And they tend to succeed and live longer as penguins, partially because of this pebbling thing. They each give each other a little pebble. And he said the equivalent in the work world is to share memes and just fun small things with your colleagues, which seems meaningless when you send a funny meme via Slack to a buddy, but that's actually building a level of connection that makes everyone feel better about office work and then contributes to a better We're work. pebble makers. Yeah. I love that. Well, You're we pebblers. make pebbles. I was going to say share our videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. We're going to link in the episode description above. Jack, you and I kind of, kind of toss each other pebbles all day. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you guys are yeah throwing oh, rocks, boulders at each other's heads. Yeah. Seinfeld <laughs> reference every now and then. Are you guys going to do the very end? Where we're going to give you guys three minutes back in your day, like your hero, like your absolute <laughs> yeah. heroes. It's Fifty-seven. Look at that. Yeah. We're going to get time you back on in your day. You're welcome. Yeah. But and you we know, will thank you lot. profusely. You know, you know one person's going to be like, one more thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, I don't know why. It's you guys so are five funny minutes over said, lunch. We're going to get here. you on out of here. That is exactly what every like where am I going? Meeting leader says. Give you the yeah. gift of time. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for anything else. Thank you. It's so simple, but I can't stop laughing. This question is from Tim in Germany. Should I pursue an MBA? I'm a huge fan of the podcast and I hope you have a live show in Germany or Europe one day. I've been working in a software engineer for the past seven years. I've been considering getting an MBA because I would like to have the qualification requirement to become C-level and for the expected pay raise. Is an MBA worth it? I'll leave this to the students. To broaden this for a second before getting to the MBA part, this is kind of a when to jump question about should I leave for an MBA should I leave to start a company? Should I leave to a new thing? Just a quick thought on just any kind of when to jump moment. An interesting rule of thumb could be a one, three, six rule of like one month, three months, six months. So if you're still thinking about the idea after one month, it's a valuable idea. You should go a little further with it and go to work on it. Let it it marinate. Yes. And once you've been working on it for three months, it's kind of like a side hustle thing outside work. If you still have that momentum and it's gone to a better place, that means you're ready to leave. So at the six-month mark, you should probably move on to that exciting new thing. Could be business school, could be a company, but a helpful way for like when to jump moments is kind of that one month, three month, six month. Mm-hmm. Am I still I interested? That. Am I still working on it? Am I ready to leave my I, opportunity? I, like that. That's I love that. A lot of times I'm like, let's just sit on the idea and see if we still feel the same way like 
in a week, but I like one yeah. one three six is much more sense. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's actually those are nice round numbers. Do you guys want to talk so about the NBA or should I kind of jump in? No, but you can no. jump in that and then we can <laughs> I have nothing to say. You guys all but there's also the not pursuing an NBA, which is also part of the question. Uh, yeah. I, I'll be I'll be honest. I think if your career is going well, don't go to the get don't get the NBA. Mm. Um, if your career feels like it's in a rut, NBA is an option, an expensive option, mm. but it's going to open up doors for you. You'll meet a ton of new people. You'll gain new skills. You'll have fun for two years. You'll be really busy. You'll party your butt off. A lot you'll of take beer pong. Really expensive trips. You'll play beer pong again. Yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. first time in ten years, um, it is. It's definitely an option to kind of jumpstart, kickstart your career, but it's very expensive and it takes time. So if there are other paths to furthering your career that aren't an MBA, they're definitely worth looking at. I think there's also a misunderstanding of MBAs because my MBA experience and yours, they were totally different from our classmates. Like you and I were side hustling a company we'd already started and already monetized True. through business school. So like I'd be in Philadelphia doing class four days a week. Then I'd hop on a train, come up to New York, see my fiance, meet up with Jack at the New York Stock Exchange and do like a TV interview for our company. And that was our MBA experience. And what I loved about it was that my classmates were totally understanding and so supportive. And it's not nearly as competitive as you think. And I think for my business school experience, it was like it set Jack and I up in a cool way to pursue our dream further, which we now get to do every day. That's a fair point. Everything I just said about like beer pong and all that, if you had like, you know, I had classmates who had kids. Yeah. I had classmates who had jobs. You can have different experiences. Yeah. I had classmates who had like loved ones that needed care. Yeah. There are other ways than just replaying your undergrad life. Yeah. Like, it doesn't there, have to be that way. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, I went, like you said, I was in a rut. I wanted to learn new skills. I felt like I had maxed out in sales. I could go sell anywhere, anything, but I didn't understand how a business ran in its, you know, in a holistic sense. And I just, I knew what I didn't know. I knew I needed to learn something. Mm -hmm. I think in this, from this standpoint, this person said they wanted to be a C-suite, which you don't need an MBA to do, especially if you start a company and want to be the CEO. You've got mm, the skills. I mean, point. if the goal is to open up other doors or learn certain things, I think then maybe that's the reason to go. But I'd, I'd probably want to ask a few clarifying questions on yeah. what yeah. this person wants to do. Tim probably wants a ya yeah or a nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but probably does. It's yeah. always complicated. But I, I'm glad you said you were in a rut because I think that is a confession. Like, Business school students, they say, why'd you go to business school? There's always like a glorious kind of, like we said earlier, you practice your story yeah. in your first year of business school. You have a perfect story. But a lot of business school students, if they're being honest, they were in a rut and yeah. they wanted to get out of that rut. Yeah. So if you're not in a rut, don't go. Yeah. I, I also think saying that there's other options. Like you mm -hmm. can start a company for two years. This is mm -hmm. a really expensive endeavor. Yeah. And if you want to join a startup, like pivot, just apply to a totally different like field, do that for two years and yeah. then go back. That's another option that I think people just, a lot of people think like, I'm in consulting, I have to go to business school. I'm in finance, I have to go to business school. You totally can. And if you can afford that luxury, absolutely. You do not have to. There are yeah. other options. Also, frankly, I think the return on a business school investment gets higher with age. I think I found my classmates who were right out of college didn't have the work experience of was content old. to put into business school. I was, I was so old, old too. I, I had 30. Yeah, same. And uh, so I, I was older, but I had more experience from work life to put into business school to get more out. So you could kind of wait and wait. And at a certain point, maybe it doesn't make sense. But if you then pull the trigger at 35, you may get more out of it than someone who's 22. Totally agree. Yes. Yes. The youngest classmates, I think, aren't, don't know what they're looking for yet. Yeah. And they're really focused on the test scores. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get out what you put in, right? And if this person wants to go find a co-founder, for example, or mm. potentially raise money, I mean, I think there's a reason to go to business school. And I always felt like, you know, you're the average of the, the people you're around, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like for business school, high motor, high drive, high ambition people all wanting to do different things. And some the younger ones maybe not mm -hmm. know exactly what they want to do. But for me, it was a huge confidence booster that like, hey, I can hang here and hey, these people are also making me better as well. And as yeah. much of a break as it is and as much partying as there was, I think similar, I was very grateful that I went at 30 mm -hmm. versus 24, 25. Makes sense. And not to plug Demoted here, which I know we'll do at the end, but we did a whole episode on this. 55 nice. minutes. That hasn't released yet, but if you want to learn more and oh, unpack this further, feel we free to unpack it. We unpack it. We do mm -hmm. talk about beer pong. This episode drops in September, so will the episode be there? When? Yes. 
It will be there. <laughs> nice. You can go listen to the episode right now. It's yes. Live. Yes, it is live. Is an MBA worth it? Was it right. worth it for you guys? Would you do it again? So I didn't finish, but um, it opened God, up. God, we got to talk about it that. It opened up a ton of doors for me. Yeah. And it, it resulted in Nick and me going full hustle the final summer of MBA. And uh, the business went so well. And we wouldn't have been in position to, to launch our podcast and scale our media company mm -hmm. had we not both gone to business school. So it worked out perfectly for us, even though I didn't get my degree. Yeah. I spent a lot of money for a piece of paper I didn't get. No, but that dropout line. Yeah, huge. Absolutely massive. <laughs> really? I mean, I didn't feel like I needed it. I don't know. Also, we ended up with a job that we'll never need a resume for again, which is kind of cool. I haven't updated my resume since 2018. Yeah. Mine just says, see Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we also brought a little segment. We did bring a little oh, segment. Yeah. Oh, cool. To. So on our podcast, we do a little something called Promoted Demoted. Mm. We mentioned it. Do we like it? Do we not? And so we came up with a few based off the theme of this episode, and we would love to bring you both oh, in to great. do it with us. Oh, let's do it. You yeah. want to do a little PRD with us? <laughs> PRD. <laughs> Promo demo. PRD. PRD. I'll start with the first one, cover letters. Promoted. Really? To whom it may concern, Jack. Promoted. Yeah, this <laughs> is your Promoted. opportunity to, to impress me that, first of all, you can write a letter. I, I, I'm a little old school in the sense, I, I can write cursive. Boomer Sometimes alert. <laughs> yeah. Jack wants a postcard handwritten in cursive yeah, addressed mailed to, to him. his home. Yeah. It, no, it's it's a filter to see who yeah. took an extra 20 minutes to invest in a cover letter. Yeah. Because when we when we put a job posting out, we get too many that we can even read. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. I know like AI kind of changes this question. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I want to kind of read the first paragraph, read the final paragraph. Did you say something bold and interesting? Yeah. Um, so you to hire for your podcast, if you were to hire, you would re you request a cover letter. I wouldn't even request one. I'd just see who does it. See it. Did. Or who submits maybe a more modern version of a cover for a letter. I was going to say, what about a video? A, a yeah. video is fantastic. Exactly. No. Yeah. Jack and I like to say the takeaway, it's better to be different than to be better. And a differentiated cover letter goes way further than anything, I think. I like no, that. but I, I think yeah. a video goes even further than a cover letter, <laughs> yeah. to your point. Um, I think every cover letter at the end of the day sort of starts to sound the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I do like a video or something, yeah. something different. Or a sample of the product that the company is, you know, mm. making. Or, or hit them on LinkedIn. So for us, you know, <laughs> a sample of a newsletter or a sample of our pod converted into a social clip. Yeah. That would impress. I like that a lot. Well, recruiters spend like three to five seconds only on resumes. So I guess you need That's something. That's it. Yep. Three to five Most seconds of them don't even, don't even, they bring it with them. And they'll be like, uh, so tell me, you see, you did whatever in 2015. <laughs> like, tell me about that. <laughs> yeah. They they're no not idea. ready. They're not, they don't know. So most important part of a resume? Bringing it with you. Obviously, <laughs> obviously you're high school filling GPA. it out. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. Because yeah. you bring it with you. You already filled it in three different times on the job application. Yeah. You know, my, my biggest regrets that. on my old resumes when I was applying was too much information and not enough, not enough surprising material. So like, I wish I'd not had eight bullets about working with Latin American right, startups. Right, right. And instead I wished I'd had that one bullet that said I worked construction in Manhattan one summer. Yeah. The yeah. final bullet on my resume, which I haven't updated since 2018, <laughs> is that I was the three time wine salesman of the month at the Olive Garden yeah. and retired on top. But I love to well, say sales. that one for you. Love I love that. that. <laughs> that's love you think that. You, I, you're for sure going to the next <laughs> round for me. You're for sure going to the next Jack, round. When we go out to dinner, like we'll be at Catonia and Jack will be selling the wine guy. He'll be like, <laughs> Jack will turn to him and be like, no, you look like a Chianti guy. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. End of the meal. So Jack the and I have no shame. No shame at all. Yeah. So yeah. No shame. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. No so shame. cover letters were overall promoted. I love it. Yeah. Right we're, gonna, we're gonna promote them. Write in cursive. Yeah. Send it to Jack's home address. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Facts prefer. Okay. <laughs> promoted demoted vests. I wish so badly that vests weren't associated with finance bros. Yeah. Because I freaking love vests. I know. I know you guys. I would have gotten this to you. I'm always chilling. Yeah, they're great if a wind is coming right at your core. <laughs> <laughs> in this city. <laughs> very narrow. In this city. It's, wind. I am it's certain right if I opened up your closet, there would be more vests than I could count. <laughs> I just know it <laughs> about you. Instead of vests, because like I do get you know kind of the eye roll of the finance bro look i have to wear like an undershirt instead yeah and i hate like you know there's the no bacon undershirt. shirt yeah it's because it's warm outside but if it was chilly i'd have to wear an undershirt and it looks so juvenile <laughs> in my opinion jack has a lot of specific thoughts like you don't like it when uh people wear backpacks to a corporate job if you're wearing a suit i don't think you should ever wear a backpack. it doesn't pair well yeah you should i leave because i have my backpack with me. should i just get out of ross, here ross will bring a backpack everywhere I you are a total backpack, backpack guy I, I was like should i bring a backpack you're like what do you need to bring i was like 
nothing. I just can't. I just can't like wear the suit by itself. You know? That's so another weird. No, no, my book. If you're wearing a suit, don't run up the stairs two steps at a time. Yeah, just walk up the stairs. So you can have I a backpack. Just, just don't sprint with it. This is painted on my body right now. If I if I took two steps, I, you'd hear a ripping sound. We should point I'm out. Not Ross, kidding. Ross also owns a pair of Louboutin boots, I believe. Right? Oh, well, well, you know, they're loafers. So you're mixing spikes, it up in fashion. Yeah. Oh. I dabble. Nick, where do you stand yeah. on vests? On vests? Well, Jack, you know, I'm Enneagram 3 with a four wing, so I've got this creative side. So I've always, I like to be a little bit different, so I've never really gotten into the vest game. I've never seen you wear a vest. That's beneath right, him. Fine, you got me. I don't have the arms <laughs> for vests. Apparently. I don't have the arms for vests. <laughs> 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 little pipe cleaners coming out yeah, of that. Yeah. Promoter, you want a vest with bare arms. <laughs> <laughs> a vest, but with a sleeve attached. With a sleeve, exactly. <laughs> okay, so you're promoting, hard promote. Otherwise known as a jacket. Yeah. I'm demoting it. Yeah, bring the vest back. Yeah. Promoted or demoted, starting a LinkedIn post with, I'm thrilled to announce. Demoted. But what if you're thrilled? Huge demoted. <laughs> what if you're thrilled and you have an announcement? Then what? Give us some alternatives. Stokes to announce. Just say something different. We're, we're all, we're anti-cliche. I'm full yeah. stop. Yeah. In fact, if I ever like, you know, Nick and I do our research and Nick edits my script of the story. Cliches are always struck by Nick. Yeah, that's He's how we edit each other's editor. work. We look yeah. for a cliche accent. And, and then we, we challenge ourselves to find a new way to say that same thing. Yeah. An un, un, unexpected twist on like, I'm thrilled to announce. Uh, like instead of saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch, Jack and I like to say, guac is always extra. Mm -hmm. So avoid the cliche, come up with your own cliche. Instead of the cash cow of the business, what's the profit puppy of the business? Yeah, instead of the lost leader, it's the lost llama. <laughs> So. Great uh, response. Really cover the whole Noah's Ark. <laughs> yeah, what, what just but, happened? <laughs> what just happened? Like literally, I'm. <laughs> like, is this animal? What are we watching? <laughs> like, what are we watching? Right the now? Discovery Channel. I don't know. Well, okay. for a LinkedIn post, it, it's great. I guess another way for you to filter it, and I love that point, Jack, about taking a different approach is: Does this LinkedIn post sound more like a press release, or does it sound like more like a text to a buddy? And I think at this point, the pendulum has swung so far to the press release side. You want it to sound more like a text. So instead of, I'm thrilled to announce my new position, I'm honored to take this place. on, yeah. like, hey guys, incredibly fun update for you. Guess what? That dream job I mentioned to lunch the other day, boom, I got I it. Would, Let's whoa. go. Guess what, I chicken would, butts? I love it. <laughs> Big announcement <laughs> alert. What's up, dogs? <laughs> yeah. Nick, I would love that LinkedIn All right, post. so from now on, Jack, all my LinkedIn posts, we're going full emoji text messages if I'm yeah. texting you. I are love you guys that. using LinkedIn for this? We are. We've been, we've been finding a lot of love for T-Boy more on, on LinkedIn over the last year. We've been sharing more there. And we've definitely Good. seen that. Jack I mean, and I thought one of our stories, our three stories we do every day, is a conversation starter. <sighs> Promoted, demoted, starting business with a friend. With Promoted. a close friend. Promoted. With a Absolutely. best friend. Where's the with hesitation? a best friend. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Oh, I mean, I think the key thing about founding a business is that you're going to spend a crazy amount of time with that person. So you better enjoy time spent with that person. Yep. Absolutely. And the most important part of the business is trust and then comes fun. And you get that the most with your friend. I get it that there are businesses that have been founded by best friends and it hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. But it's worked out fantastically for Nick and me. And the best part, which our audience has heard before, but hear us out yeah. <laughs> one more time it's just I know that any suggestion Nick makes is in the best interests it's not selfish I don't need to question where it's coming from it's all thinking about what is best for us because we are the company the mm -hmm. two of us yep. we, we have fantastic employees but like we're going to be doing this until we're 70 yeah. and I trust wholeheartedly that any suggestion Nick makes whether it's a, a sentence in an episode or like a big strategic pivot is in the right interests the trust is just 100%. Absolutely. We, we put our relationship above everything, too. Like, the business decisions we make, it's like, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this, Jack? Are you, you're excited? All right. This works. And that is generally aligned with the business. But we put our relationship first, and that has led the business in directions that can never have gone if you're just two guys focused on the business. And the amount of laughter oh I God. get on a daily basis is amazing. by recording the show with Nick my core is way harder than it would be if I didn't have Nick. Uh, now, that's how I have a Can sushi show cakes every week. Totally. It's because he has me, my You're abs laughing. working on the laughter. I love this. I'm feeling inspired. Being that it's two of you, do you guys have like a certain way to break stalemates? Because Natalie and I, we do like a beanbag fight. Yeah. yeah. Submission. We, <laughs> we, it gets very aggressive. Exactly. But, like, how, yeah. do you deal with, how do you deal with disagreements? Like, do you have any... Any fights you want to share? One of the best investments we ever made was the first one we made when we left Robinhood. We invested in a brand strategy. 
and we determined like what the key elements are that make our podcast what it is. And there are a few key words that are critical that are in every story we do. And those words are a little different. They each have a little tension. But there's one word that's like the North Star of all, and it's brightness. Does this show make someone feel brighter, smarter, or and also brighter, happier? And whenever Jack and I are trying to figure out, huh, should we do this story or should we partner with this company or should we, does this merch work? We go back to, if, we're, if we have different opinions on it, well, at the end of the day, is it brighter? And that usually I leads us that. to the right direction. Ross, we're going to need a whiteboarding session after this. I I, I'm going to book you for... <laughs> Can we get a little more caffeine for my other eye? Yeah, we're okay. going to need <laughs> okay. some serious whiteboarding. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling inspired. Thank you for sharing that with yeah, us that too. Great. as like fellow you know, co-hosts and business owners. We Jack disagrees though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have another thought on this, Jack? I was going to say, you know, I'm a New England boy, so we stole this one from Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, who grew up down the street from each other. Nice. How insane is yeah. that? The ultimate co-founders. Yeah. Good Will Hunting is the favorite movie of 65% of New England guys, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so they trust each other completely, mm-hmm. just like Nick and I do, because uh, they're childhood friendship, just like us. But um, basically the way they like break a tie is... They ask each other who feels more strongly about this. And if Nick feels really strongly yeah, about that's a, great point. A, a disagreement, I'll be like, dude, we're, we'll do it. Yeah. I'm good. And same. I'll I'd rather, your like, coffee, you can have I'd rather <laughs> Jack be happy than like a yeah. certain takeaway sound a certain way no, on I'm the good. podcast. Yeah. And if I yeah. feel really strongly about something, I'll tell Nick that and he'll be like, okay. Yeah. Because he knows my intention is in the right place. Yeah. I wow. Can, I mean, you guys got to launch a course. Seriously. Starting a business with your buddy. Yeah. Buddy business. <laughs> buddy biz. Business besties. So- Natalie, Greg, such, such nice words. Thank you. Uh, I'm truly honored and blessed to have Nick. But for those who don't have business besties, yes, Jack, can you share a few words about your wonderful podcast that Nick and I subscribe to? Demoted. Thank you for subscribing. We need all the subscribers we can get. Yeah, um, you guys demoted. Ratings you guys and double our subscribers. If you're if you're this far <laughs> through the podcast and you're like, who the heck are those two people who are randomly on the pod? It's Ross and I. We started a podcast called Demoted, and our goal is to be your work bestie. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a work bestie, we want you to throw us on on your car in the gym. Listen to us. Hopefully, we brighten your day and give you some work advice along the way. What I miss, Ross? I don't think you missed anything. I think that was pretty much perfect. Amazing. Like I said, okay. it's eighty percent learning, twenty percent laughing, which is the inverse of their social accounts, which and, we'll also link to in the episode description. You know, you might not learn sometimes. We recorded yesterday. <laughs> we, we literally ended it with "sorry for that." Fair point. Fair <laughs> point. And tune in next week. <laughs> Fair point. I, I think it's in a, a recent mixed episode, bag. It's a mixed Ross bag. Ross explained that if you're in the bathroom stall and you're trying to cover yourself up, you can either cough or have a well-timed stomp. That's a so learn. If you That's consider learn. that learning, that is a learn. then That's what we call a learn. value, my friends. Yeah. No, but what Jack and I appreciate about your show is that <laughs> Jack and I really believe in chemistry driving content. You guys have such a good chemistry. There are, I can't think of anyone else who could connect bachelor and bachelorette parties to work best practices in the way that you guys did in a recent episode. I was laughing out loud about it, sharing it with Jack too, but the fact that you guys can snag such relatable things outside of work and then connect them to a workplace about how one of you was on a bachelorette that was ridiculously organized to the point where snack time was set for all 18 people. (laughs) And the other one was walking in to a bachelor party where they hadn't even planned the golf timing yet, but it all planned to play golf, (laughs) but had no tea time. We were going to get there. We were going to get there. (laughs) But then connecting it back to work was amazing. Work can feel like a lonely place sometimes. And if it does, these two will make you feel seen. Yes. And you'll have fantastic laughter you'll feel promoted it's a, it's a you'll feel show. promoted I, yeah i really enjoy listening to it you'll feel well promoted. we are honored to be on this podcast you two yeah. are incredible like thank you for having us this has been an absolute blast yeah this was so effortless and you guys are great was, thanks, was, for, was, thanks for driving was, like you know it was, carrying it was honestly us through beautiful it was honestly beautiful watching you two like truly i feel inspired oh, yeah. about yeah, like being a podcast so, i mean time. we have so much to learn from you two and so thank you for yeah. having us on we should, we should all be proud of because it's really fun that we all get to do this before we close every show we like to whip up the takeaways yeah so we're gonna let ross and natalie whip up the takeaways for our audience about the demoted podcast right now ross and natalie what's the takeaway on corporate natalie on corp and on the corporate world in general Mine is simple. Be a doer. I think the individual contributor conversation, rolling up your sleeves. Totally. Like, be a doer. Do some work. Don't just delegate. I like that. And people mm-hmm. come to you. Yeah. Like that. Across the whole corporate spectrum. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, I think relationships matter. They're always the first and foremost. You know, whether 
uh, it's someone that you work directly with or not, or for. I think that's the most important thing. People get hung up on the company and the prestige, but at the end of the day, like, it's about who you work for and who you work with, and that's what makes life fulfilling. Well, great news, guys. We're going to give you back three minutes. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you. Giving you the gift of time. <laughs> How my manager expects me to rack when they give me three minutes back. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. One more thing. No. One more thing. Yeah. No. 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 One more question before we go. Down. Just to piggyback off of. Yeah. That. Turn off the cameras. Cut. Cut. All right. Cut. I think that's a wrap, cut. everybody. Thanks for having oh, us. Thanks, Yetis. Oh